Welcome to the Architect My Life podcast. I'm Aya Schlachter, serial entrepreneur and CEO of the MGS Global Group, supporting architecture and design firms with project delivery, such as drafting, 3D visualization, and graphics production support. I am also the founder of Architect My Life. My goal is to help creative entrepreneurs such as architects and other design-related professionals grow their businesses while keeping their work-life balance. Each podcast episode features a different woman business owner or thought leader from the creative industry who shares their journey and challenges. If you have a growth story that others in our community could benefit from, Please stay until the end of the show to get selected as a guest in our future episodes. Now, let's dive into this episode. Hello, everybody. I'm really excited to introduce our next guest today, Jane Johnson. Jing, I consider a Renaissance woman who has reinvented herself several times personally and professionally. She um, graduated architecture school in China and worked there in China as an architect and moved to the U.S. as an architect, but she also studied um, business while raising a family and starting pres- and started Prism Rendering, a seven-figure premier commercial visualization firm with hundreds of clients, but that's not enough. Now she is a real estate investor, so... Um, I can't wait to start the conversation with Jing. Jing is also a mother of two, a son of a, a two two grown sons, wife of an, of an architect, and a dog mom. She loves dancing, reading, cooking, and traveling. Jing, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you, Aya. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about our conversation. So me too. I can't wait to share your story with the entire audience tell me about you know yourself and personally that's always a good place to start your background yes, for sh- sure um so i was born and grew up in china uh, in the 70s and 80s so it's very unique uh, time um, my parents both my parents um, were structure engineers so basically i grew up in a big ae um it's not the firm uh, it's because at the time, everything is owned by government. So we call uh, Architecture um, Planning Institute. So I basically grew up in the institute with, um, you know, working there. Um, and we, because we even apartment, you know, we all live in the same uh, apartment uh, complex. So basically, I'm watching and breathing architecture, engineering, uh, profession, um, the whole, you know, childhood. Um, So naturally, uh, both my brother and I chose architecture as a a major when we started college. Um, And I finished my degree and worked there for a couple of years. Um, Part of me, um, just, just looking at my parents and their colleagues and I feel like I can see myself, you know, in 50 years uh, where I will be, you know, professionally or life like I just part of me want to have a little adventure right just go out to see the world and, and not just uh, follow the exact same uh, life and career path. That's why I decided to come over here, get my master's uh, degree um, at the University of Houston. Uh, Actually, I was uh, accepted by four schools. I chose uh, Houston because uh, one of my dad's childhood friends came to Houston. He was in the oil industry. So he came here, um, get a training, uh, buy equipment. And so he's familiar with Houston. He said, if you study architecture, you should come to uh, Houston. There's a lot of uh, uh, modern, you know, architecture over there, uh, you will enjoy that. So that I chose the uh, University of Houston and, and I finished my degree because I already have my graduate degree in China. So um, I was um, admitted to a one year program, uh, finished my master's degree and uh, stay here, start working. 
I worked uh, for about three firms, small, medium, and large. Um, the last one is, was Parkinson Well. Uh, it was a global firm uh, before I start uh, Prism Renderings in 2005. Um, I guess, well, should I continue <laughs> or? Yeah, um, I would like, yeah, like, I know, I don't know if you want, you're comfortable talking about it, but I know you, when you moved here, you, you were raising a family or you, you were still, you're a newly single mom, right? Is that right? When I started a business. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, last time we talked, uh, we, we, we met, I mentioned that. So uh, basically I uh, was, was going through the, a divorce and um, raising two little boys, uh, five and eight years old um, and uh, started the business full time and to start my MBA at the same time. <laughs> I know we talk about that. I basically didn't sleep for probably six months. Uh, the first semester was really hard because I was 40 years old. Um, I just, uh, you know, basically a reset of my life, right? From W2 to uh, employee to um, business owner. Um, from a married woman to a single mom to from, uh, you know, just a full-time employee to uh, also a full-time uh, student, you know, after being away from school for quite a few years. So it was a, a very challenging time, but also exciting time just to start everything uh, new. Wow, I can't Im even imagine. Um at 40, raising kids, going to grad school, and starting a business. I mean, you make it sound so easy. But no, I'm sure no, it's not at all. <laughs> not at all. Sense. I mean, I always uh, tell people that when I was at, at, at my MBA um, classroom, I was probably the greenest person there, just because I, I had no business training. Um, you know, all my education and my work experience, I don't have that management, uh, you know, experience. I didn't have any business training. So, um, and also for um, rendering companies, unlike um, architecture firms or engineer firms, you have those uh, flagship or, you know, uh, really well-known firms, you know, the best practice, the business model in terms of business model. So you kind of, you know, understand the, the practice, right? Uh, how to run your business. Um, but rendering company, there's no, you know, company that have a, a best, best practice business model for me to follow. So basically I have to figure that out <laughs> to, so the, to learn. Why did you pursue uh, your master's degree in business? To support your rendering company or? Okay. Yes. Um, when I started the company, I just had an intuition that there's a need on the market and I can pull the resource I, because I'm from China. So I have that resources in China because at the time we were doing projects in China. I can see the, you know, the, uh, the quality and the turnaround time is just much better than our local suppliers. Um, so we, I just uh, thought it would be a good um career or business uh, to, to run uh, based on my education, my working experience and my resources. Just put all three together. I, you know, so when you don't know much about the business, you just run into it. You don't, you have no fear. You know, obviously I, 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 I didn't know a lot of things I don't know now, but but I, I have a feeling that, the, the, you know, I think our entrepreneurs are all have that intuition, right? Um, that there's a need and I can, you know, I have the resources to um, meet this need. Um, so I just went for it. So I always say um, creatives were taught how to master their craft, but not taught how to run or grow a business. But it's very refreshing to know that you actually took your MBA 
to make sure that you can run your business properly. Because I hear a lot of people complaining that we don't, creatives don't make money, but you can. And Jing is a testimonial that you can, as a matter of fact, what did you see? You're only the top 2% of women business owners who reached seven. Is that right? In, in Texas? Yeah, I found, I found, yeah, no, I think it's nationwide. It's um, under 3%. I think uh, including men and women owned business is about 7%. But uh, for women owned business, it's, I think under 3%. So, so you're a woman owned business, you're top 2% percent that has reached seven figures and she's in the creative industry people so yes it's possible to make money in the creative industry <laughs> um, that's refreshing to know so so what services do you offer at, at prism can you talk about that exactly who's yeah. your target audience everybody does a lot of people they do renderings but mm -hmm. what makes prism stand out oh thank you for that question uh, we uh, work with commercial real estate developers and brokers um, mostly, um, but that's about uh, more than 50% of my, uh, our clients uh, base. And then the other um, about half is our architecture firms. What made us stand out is our architecture background. So um, our, all our project managers have architecture degrees and uh, experience working in architecture firms. So with architects clients, we, we um, basically speak the same language. We, we, had, we were in their seats you know, before. So it's make that communication much easier. Um, and also, uh, sometimes um, our, our, our um, I would say our specialty would be early stage um, you know, projects that sometimes the architects are just they are very busy, right? Right now, everybody is short staffed. Um, they, sometimes their clients ask for renderings at early stage design uh, phase uh, renderings it's hard for them to have that capacity to produce high quality renderings. Um, they need to focus on their design and production side. Uh, so we will come in and uh, take the limited uh, design information um, and create the renderings so to meet their client's need. Um, so, and for the, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, for go the, ahead. Yeah, for the commercial real estate developers and, and uh, brokers, uh, same thing. Sometimes it's just even, it's just too early to engage um, architect at the time they need something for funding, you know, investment package or um, some zoning for zoning purpose, entitlement. Um, they need a renderings quick and high quality but it was just too early to engage architects to do a full you know, package of design, we would be able to produce that and meet their needs. So it's really interesting that to serve both uh, you know, uh, client sector in a different way. So my, my question is, since most of your team members have architecture backgrounds, and obviously you have architect clients, for, for the non-architect clients like developers, you have extended your service offering as well to include initial design for, for developers, right? Since you said they haven't engaged any architects, so you actually do not only visualization, but help them with design. Is that correct? It's just concept. It's concept. really for, yeah, yeah for the the rendering purpose uh once the project getting kick off architects will be the one taking because we are not competing with architects in yeah uh, in that aspect they we always joke with them that you after you get a project you got the funding you get the approval you know from city you need to hire real architects <laughs> to 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 do the work so basically we are in this space between you know um uh, developers and uh, architects, and we help to expedite that process to have the project uh, kick off sooner so architects can take it over. So that's why uh, for those kind of projects, uh, we have architects reach out to us. They, they, they trust us to 
um, you know, serve their clients at this stage. And then after we finish our work, um, the project get uh, started and they can take it over. Um, so it's, a, it's not going to hurt their relationship with their developer clients. It's only help get every, everything, you know, started sooner. So what, I, what really impressed me uh, about your work is I, I know I follow your company on LinkedIn. It's the scale of your projects. They're really massive. Like, how did you get to that point from doing, you know, I'm assuming you started small, but now most of your clients are, you know, big developers, right? With multi, multi-family, like huge developments. So can you talk about your business development um, strategy and how you were able to, you know, get all these big clients? I'm sure some of our new business owners want to know. Yeah, actually, we actually started with three big clients. Yeah, um, because the relationship. <laughs> yeah. And so when I started a business, uh, we have three, you know, two uh, large architecture firms and one uh, large developer client. Um, those, most of our project consists, uh, you know, come from those three top clients at the beginning because the relationship, because uh, the um, my friend or former colleagues in, in the, uh, were in those firms and they introduced me to uh, their teams. So that's how we get started. Um, however, I want to say that, um, you know, I started the business in 2005, but, you know, we, we all know what happened 2008, right? 2009, um, so because we had a ma- majority of our workers were from those uh, firm, big firms, and when their projects stopped or you know got hold, put on hold, our revenue just dropped you know dramatically. Uh, 2009, 2010, we recovered. 2011, but you know so the the moral of the story is you you can't have a clients that more than you know ideally 10% of your revenue, because um, that it's, if a major, you know, recession or things happen and you basically, uh, your business will suffer a lot more. So right now we have hundreds of clients. So our, uh, the revenue will be dispersed uh, among those clients instead of concentrate on several big clients. So that was so a you, lesson to learn. <laughs> diversify, right? Like, exactly. I mean, diversify. Mm-hmm. 2008, and then when, how many, how many um, recessions did we have? <laughs> and you're still, so, around, I mean, two. Right? I mean, I think, you know, we pushed through uh, two big ones, right? One is the 2008, 2009, and then the COVID. Uh, we we just pushed through that. Um, we actually come out a much stronger firm um, after COVID. Um, it, it's um, it's humbling because why I was I remember when I w- was working on working in um, I, I think at two firms that we had those major slowdown. It was scary, right? Everybody was worried about their jobs and, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next. And because of that, I just don't want that ever happen to my team members. Um, for me, just being responsible that um, on our financial performance, our reserves. So if um, they love our work, they love their work um, and we, we love to have them forever. <laughs> It, uh, not forever, but you know, uh, you know what I mean. It's just uh, they they don't they will never worry about. Uh, we can you know pay their paycheck. We have enough yeah. reserve to sustain us for a few months if we don't get any projects. So that safety net just really help us to push through the recessions and. Um, and so the, I'm, you, I'm know, glad you mentioned having. I'm glad you mentioned having a safety net because. A lot of, you know, new firm owners spend way too much time just doing production work and doing the drafting work and doing the rendering work. And I think what you said about it's your responsibility to make sure you have enough safety net for your people so you can pay them. And that's one of the biggest takeaways, really, that I admire from what you just said, 
we're in business not only to support our clients but also to provide our salaries for employees so that i think we all should learn from to diversify the businesses so that when a recession hits we're we, we don't lose all our sources of income. And that's super admirable. How do you teach that to a, to a young entrepreneur? Like, you know, instead of just spending time drafting all the time, like how do you, you know, like since most of our people listening to the AML podcast are young architects, entrepreneurs, like where will they even begin when they're too busy drafting and ren- doing renderings? Um, it's hard. Um, I would uh, recommend two books uh, to your audience. One is E Myth. Uh, you, you, you're, you're nodding your head. I know you read that. Mm-hmm. And the other one is Profit First. Um, Which one, what was the other one? Sorry. Profit First. Profit, oh, profit First. first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so one is E Myth, and the other one is Profit First. Can you, you know? Right. So Emit is really uh, talk about, you know, how a technician or expert, uh, uh, you know, subject matter expert, um, how they can grow their business instead of just, you know, own a job, right? When, when you are doing all that, you just said drafting all the way to renderings, um, you basically are owning a job, which is fine. You know, it's a, it's personal choice. I, I think uh, business. I what I love about business is that there's so many options, so many choices. It really depends on your lifestyle, your goals, your you know legacy you want to leave. Um, so if they choose to treat it like a lifestyle uh, business, um, is basically owning a, a job. You you have your uh, freedom and you have you set your own schedule, which is totally fine. I, I don't think probably not everybody's uh, you know um, should be scaling, growing in their business. So I, I think I want to put that. Um, you know, first is just you. It's a personal choice, but if you do have a ambition or you want to build a legacy, you want to build a team, you want to serve more clients, you want helping more um, employees or team members, then you need to read Emit and you know, Profit First actually is suitable for every business owners. It's really the discipline, you know, how you, um, this is about the behavior control. <laughs> it's not really financial knowledge, right? A lot of times um, when we, when we, uh, it's, it's like, I don't know if you heard of Dave Ramsey, um, he's a financial, uh, personal financial guru. Um, you, you heard about the um, envelope system. Have you heard of Wait, which envelope system? system? Envelope. No. No, it's, it's basically your grandma, how your grandma managing their money, right? So they have, you know, they have a fixed amount of income every month coming in. They put in a different envelope. You know, this one is for your clothing. This one is for your food. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, just different use of, uh, so you are not running out the money at the end of the month or year. Same thing. This is a very similar. Is it? when the money comes in, you put in a different several checking account. So one is operations, one is uh, for um, the, the owner's uh, pay payment, one is profit, one is tax payment. So you set aside when the money comes in, you set aside in those different accounts and you, d- you don't spend, for example, if you put 60% of your um, income into into the operations, right? So when you receive a ten thousand dollar check, you, you you don't think you you actually don't have ten thousand to spend. You only have sixty, you know, uh, six thousand, uh, right, for operations. So uh, that just discipline, you know, discipline uh, how you control your business finance. In that, so this uh, is the profit. Way. Profit Profit first, first. Book. yeah, yeah, and then for e myth is more about the system. So if you do want to uh, build a business instead of just owning a job, 
you need to start to delegate uh, your, your task. You need to hire, you, you even outsource, you know, certain tasks or, or, or you know, I, I always say trust the experts. So I will, will have a different subject matter expert for as our consultant or advisors, we're not going to touch it. You know, we, uh, we trust them to do a much better job than us. Um, so EMIT is more about systemize your business. Wow, thank you so much for this. A lot of nuggets there, gold nuggets from Jing. Take note, profit first and e-myth, which I read several times and I'm still reading. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that you mentioned in our past conversations is you have an all-women team. And tell yes. me about what it's like um, working with all women and how your leadership style, like what your leadership style is in general. Yeah. Um, thank you for that question. I love talking about, about my team. <laughs> uh so I actually part of first part of my business, I, I did have a lifestyle business. Um, I was uh, by myself. I didn't hire any team members, um, although I hire uh, engaged uh, marketing and uh, accounting, you know, professionals to help me with my books and my marketing side of business. Um, but when at the time when I started the business, my boys were five, eight years old. And um, the first few years, I was able to have that flexibility to, you know, grow this business and also take care of my boys. Um, so when I started to hire Sarah, who is my uh, first team member, um, she, we went to the same church. So I trusted her and we start talking about, you know, having her join me. And, um, and it made me realize, because at the time she just had a baby, a new baby, um, make me realize that, you know, this is, could be a, some, I got something here, right? Not just for myself, for my own family, but also uh, I can use this to help other women to have the same benefit I have had for the past few years so that's how we started with all women team all moms actually um all moms teams um it's you know all our current uh team members um moms with young children and um it was just a uh, for me it's gratifying you know um serving clients finishing a project is it's always exciting and, um, you know, just uh, enjoying uh, experience. However, you make that impact in somebody's life and career is even more gratifying for me. Um, so it's, it's just for me to watch them grow over the years. Sarah v. and Vivian have been with us for eight years now, almost. Um, and then it's just watching them grow um, in um, professionally and uh, personally, it's it's just a, a the legacy I want to uh, leave behind. And so we basically have a lot of uh, I engage uh, business coach um, for five years with our team, you know, group coaching. And we always we, I'm trying to set up this uh, learning, always learning, <laughs> improving cultural, you know, um, team. So everybody, we always watch, you know, look at a different resources, different uh, way to, to learn together as a team. If I learn something from uh, the resources I have, I will sh- share with the team and bring it back. So we all learn together, grow together. Uh, so I think that's just make your job fun because there's so many choices you can take your your, your job or work for someone, but make it fun, make it, you know, feel fulfilled um, in, your, in, your, in your work is, for me, it's just, uh, it's, it's more exciting than doing, uh, finish a project. Yeah, so you really practice the e-myth by, you know, having all these people around you. I know that your management team are not all architects. Can you share the kind of, um, uh, the positions that you've hired? Because- because yeah. a lot of us, we do everything. A lot of architects are marketing, <laughs> they do rendering, they do drafting, they do accounting. 
But I want <laughs> Jing to explain what the role of her team is because um, it's pretty impressive. I, thank you. Uh, I would uh, say our core team uh, right now, we have seven of us, seven moms. So our core team, um, I'm the one oversees uh, the business and you know strategic planning, mentoring, um, uh, big uh, relationship, you know, building things like that. And then we have Sarah is the VP of our operations. Uh, so she will be handling all the operation related um, aspect of the business and including uh, some of the marketing uh, work. And then we have uh, Deborah is the VP of business development. So she is a full-time business development. She does uh, meet with new uh, clients, per prospects, and she also maintains some of the existing clients' relationships. For us, business development is all about relationships, how you connect to people, help people, and also uh, strengthen our existing clients' uh, relationship. And also, um, we will have Vivian is the VP of project management um, team. So she will be managing uh, all the projects, uh, you know, uh, processes and, and the procedures and, and quality control. Um, and then we have uh, Lily, is also a project manager. I also manage some projects. And then we have uh, Amanda is the accounting uh, manager. So she will be doing all the uh, bookkeeping controllers, you know, uh, aspect closing the amount um, and all the financial statements. And she's, she will be handling all the accounting related work. And then we have Jill she, who is the uh, um, part-time marketing coordinator and so you, you saw we have newsletter over seven years we never as a monthly newsletter we never miss addition <laughs> and uh, we also have daily uh, social media post about our work our clients our team um, and so that's our core team and then we have uh, also engaged a uh, copywriter, um, press really, uh, uh, Carrie, she will uh, help with all the newsletter copywriting and also uh, website copywriting and press release. Um, and then we have a fractional CFO. <laughs> and uh, yeah. CFO, what, what's this? What? Fractional CFO. So fractional, fractional. CFO. Yeah, yeah, so they so basically accounting accountant, uh, the CPAs, uh, they are responsible for historical performance of your financial performance of your firm. Um, so they will gather all the you know data and just make sure everything is correct, right? Um, but CFO is really looking beyond, is looking at the future how you use those historical data to make wise and you know, business decision going forward. So it's about the projection, it's about the budgeting, it's about um, you know, growth. And for us also on, on top of that is about you know, how to increase the value of the company, not just the top line revenue. So, so we, yeah, so we engage, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh no, this is so impressive. Like you don't become a seven figure business alone. You know, you need people and Jing is a testimonial to this. I mean, I, I wish everyone will hear this, every business owner, not only creatives, because to be able to grow, you need to transfer information. You need to know what your limitations are and, and promote and bring other people to have a common goal. And I really like that you're doing your legacy building. And I want to talk about this a little bit more um, because this is one of, all, one of the things that I want Jing to cover about succession planning. She has an entire um, you know, spiel about this. And I don't know if we have enough time, but just talk about succession planning and why it's important for architects or business owners to start doing it and what you're doing about your own succession planning. Let's start about why we, sh we all should think about it. 
Right. Um, so go back to uh, when we talk about EMF, um, you know, if you choose to have a lifestyle business and just enjoying what you do, and when you decide to retire, you just close the practice, that's one choice, right? And, um, but if you do want to, uh, same thing with succession plan, if you do want to have a team, you want to grow the business, you want to serve more clients, succession plan is a, a must, right? Uh, for me, it's also a responsibility because I don't know if something happened to me tomorrow, I don't want the business to stop. You know, um, I want the clients to still can, you know, trust us so we can still serve them continuously. I, I don't want our team lose a job, right? Because I, I could not perform my, uh, uh, my part. I just, I, I just, you know, su succession plan is about the continuity, right? So just make sure business still run beyond you. It's not stop at you. Um, and, and also on top of that, um, the reason I started thinking about succession plan was about five years ago. I was just really grateful for my team. I, I feel, you know, I cannot do this alone. Um, our team, I start a business, I lay some foundations, but my team are the, is the, are the team members are the one help me to grow it. And I want to reward them um, in terms of, you know, the ownership options, you know, so they can have that option to uh, take over one day. Um, and um, it's just uh, for, for me, just have that uh, it's almost like a will, right? You, you, you have a personal, you, you want to have a will. So if something happened to you, 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 your kids, you don't want everybody grieving at the same time, worry about financials and you know, all that other aspect you want to plan ahead. So, um, you know, it, it, it just, for me, I just don't want everybody to, to be put everybody in that position that is a chaos and this is not going to be, beneficial for any stakeholders of our business. So um, that's why um, I started a, that planning with an uh, advisor um, company in Houston. So we basically put a plan uh, together just to make sure that um, our leadership team will have that, um, you know, the financial sor uh, source and um, also the options to take over in 10 years. That's our plan. Wow, that's really amazing. Um, so what's next for Jing? <laughs> next for me, um, so me, I'm going to focus on next uh, 10 years. So before that, all that happened, so next 10 years, I'll be really um, groom our leadership team not just by myself, because I, I also have a limited knowledge and uh, expertise. So I actually engage some top notch, you know, expert advisors to help me to grow the team and to, so they are capable to do what, you know, the company, because as a company grow that need and the professionalism, the, the uh, level of um, quality and the business uh, acumen is just going to grow as well. So um, first of all, I don't want to, I'm, I'm continue learning. I don't want to be the cap of the business. Usually that's what happened. Business owner is the, you know, you are the, the bottom, bottom neck of the business growth, right? So I want to learn, get ahead, get ahead. So I'm not going to be the bottom neck of the, of the business. And in the meantime, I want to groom the, the, the team. And then, um, well, in three years, um, I'll be do, uh, doing more. You, you mentioned that earlier. Uh, I'm a real estate investor, so I'm going to do more investment, passive, passive. I don't think I have enough energy and, and uh, time to do uh, active uh, investing, but passive investing. Um, so it's, uh, you know, business, you, you, you create an income, but investing, you create wealth, right? And you are also able to- that again in the in business you create income but can you explain that yeah you have cash flow you have a 
enough cash flow to support your lifestyle, your 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 daily needs at the current time. But if you that's all you have, you have to continue to work forever. So uh, you saving and investing is another part of your financial life is to how do you create a passive enough passive income so one day yeah. you don't have to rely on the the income uh, you create from your business so that's uh, something i want to uh, learn and do more um hopefully eventually i can help my kids my team members also have that so that's the next step is to learn. I always want to learn my, by myself first, and then I can pass that knowledge and, and experience to younger generation. So everybody can benefit from what I learn. So um, Jay, thank you so much. This last 45 minutes, I see as a condensed master's degree. Um, we learned about the importance of um, continue will always become a lifelong learner for business owners hiring a coach. Um, the e myth, um, the e myth book, which is you know, for you to grow, you need to transfer information, hire the right team members, and the book Profit First, the envelope system. You have to, you know, make sure you have enough funds for each part of the business, and a lot of um, entrepreneurs who are not trained in business really don't like to tackle the business part and the finance part and your legacy and legacy building, which is really important because we don't want to just work and work until we die. We need to create a legacy for ourselves and for our family and for the team members. And lastly, um, being responsible for your team. And that's, that's um, really very admirable to be able to recognize that you're not in business for yourself, but for the team members as well. I really enjoyed our conversa conversation, Jing, and thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for inviting me. I love your show. I love all the, I listen to all the episodes and you, did, you are doing a great job here in our community. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Architect My Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you on social media using the hashtag Architect My Life podcast. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Aya underscore Architect My Life. And for women business owners, I invite you to join the all woman private Facebook group called Architect My Life. If you haven't already, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the show as well as rate or review us wherever you access your podcasts. If you think you have something to add to the conversation for your success running a business, we invite you to apply to be a guest in one of our upcoming episodes. Visit architectmylife.com slash podcast to learn more. Remember, work-life balance is important, so join us for tips from others as they share their experiences on managing and growing their businesses and balancing their lives. I'm Aya Schlachter. Thanks again for listening. Until next time. Thank you.